Let me explain. I mean, typically the end of April is for planting peas and taters, not dogs. Well, it's not all bad news. Um, there is, there is something going on in the, uh, <clears throat> behind the scenes that's been in the works for a little while now. I'm not ready to share it yet, so if any of my family or friends that know what I'm talking about is watching this, you be quiet down in the comments. So this is Whiskey. She is a Western Showline German Shepherd, and I got her from Craig and Jen Moody at uh, Northwoods Kennel. Do you have the hiccups? What are you doing? You do have the hiccups. This was not a knee-jerk reaction to losing Junebug. This actually has been, um, we've been planning, officially planning this since January. Um, I saw that they, Northwoods Kennel had posted they were going to breed Bella one last time before they retired her. And to go, go back even further, I, I'd been following them online for quite a while now. And I was actually going to get a puppy last year. But then Liam fell right in love with coonhounds. So we got him Mildred for his birthday. And I didn't want to have to, you know, deal with two puppies at the same time. So I decided to hold off for another year. And uh, <clears throat> so I saw that they posted and they were going to breed Bella one last time. And they've got another beautiful uh, German Shepherd. She's black with like a little white patch on her chest. They're going to breed her next year. What? What? You can't get into everything. So, I filled out the application, and it was approved, and then in March, when they did the x-rays to find out how many puppies she was going to have, then um, I paid for her before she was born. They said I had first pick of the females. She ended up being the only female. She has five brothers, and uh, at the time of this recording, I believe they, they have one male left. They have one male left. Where are you going? <laughs> so I'll leave their contact information in the description down below so you can go check them out. Like I said, they've got one male pup left. Yeah, I, I was pretty impressed. They, you, can, you can tell they really care about their dogs. It's not like a puppy male or anything like that. Far from it. They, uh, they take really good care of them. They know what they're doing. And uh, they care where their puppies end up, you know. They're, you can tell they're not in it for the money. Honestly, they could charge more for their dogs than they are. <clears throat> the day the puppies were born was the day that I found out that Junebug had liver failure. I've wanted a German Shepherd for like 20 years. Um, and I've read... I've read uh, How to Be Your Dog's Best Friend by the Monks of New Skeet. Um, also there, they've got another book, um, The Art of Raising a Puppy. I got a <clears throat> training course online by Will Atherton. Um, he's the founder of Fenrir Canine Leaders. Um, so I bought his puppy course a while back and been watching those videos, there's, um, I started out, I found him on YouTube and then found out that he had this puppy course, so I bought that. And, uh, then there's also Robert Cabral. He's got some really great videos on YouTube. I'll link all this down below in case you're interested. So, I had been reading up and studying up and, um, and all this and preps for getting the puppy. A lot of people that I talk to, they're like, oh, well, the, the timing's perfect. And I mean, I can see what they're saying. Um, personally, I, you know, if I had any way of like seeing how this all was going to play out, I would have preferred to have a little bit more time probably, but I'm not gonna cry. Just not quite, you know, 100% emotionally <laughs> prepared for this. Um, so, like, the week before we went to pick Whiskey up, 
I still had some stuff to get, you know, for her and, um, cause I mean, right up until, you know, things started going south with Junebug, I was pretty excited and, you know, oh yeah, reading up, studying up, doing all this stuff and watching the training videos and, and, uh, but I hadn't like, you know, picked up any supplies per se and, and then after, you know, I had to put Junebug down, it kind of, I'm like, well, yeah, we'll get, we'll get some stuff. So I actually took Sweetie to the pet shop and that was, <laughs> I wouldn't say it was a mistake, but it was an adventure. Um, she, you know, of course, four years old, just absolutely 100% gung-ho all in it, you know. And uh, she just wanted to get every cute toy and accessory and she wanted to buy the entire pet shop for this puppy. <laughs> So, um, yeah, we left the pet shop that day with a little bit more than I, uh, went there for. But even in the pet shop, I was, uh, I caught myself tearing up a couple times. And, uh, the day that we, we picked her up Friday. Today is Wednesday. And, um, even on the, the drive to go pick her up, I was tearing up a little bit. And uh, on the on the ride back, of course, you know, she's an eight-week-old puppy. We just took her away from her five brothers and her mother. And so she was a little upset and crying some. And and uh, then, because I, I had her up front in the truck with me. And going down the road after a little way, she curled right up in my lap while I was driving and fell asleep. So I, when she did that, I kind of felt my heart melt a little bit. And... Um, She's she's a really great puppy. She really is. She's a beautiful dog. Um, she's confident. She's very confident. Uh, but sweet at the same time. Like, she's the perfect combination. And um, she's... Yeah, that just kind of... That surprises me. Because both Junebug and Mildred, when they were pups, were very uh, timid and shy and uh, very jumpy. But... This little thing, she'll she'll come over and give kisses and then turn around and be ready to take on the world. It's hilarious, really. It's just kind of surprised me a little bit. I was not expecting her to be as confident and sure of herself as she is. So, when we brought her home, um, Mildred did not like her at all. So the, for the first few days the number one priority was getting the two of them to get along together. <laughs> Sorry about that. What are you doing? She's rolling around on the floor with her bully stick. You're foolish. You're kicking the camera. You're shaking everybody. Top priority was getting the two of them you know to be good with each other and and Mildred she did she came around um, just kept them both on leashes, kept everybody safe, and, you know, I spent, when, when we brought her home, I spent over an hour and a half just sitting on the kitchen floor in between the two of them, you know, letting them check each other out. And, uh, so she came around, and crate trained her, and that's going really well. I know there's a lot of people that, um get upset over crate training a dog. They think it's horrible, they think it's abusive and neglectful and mean. Um, the way I see it, which I will agree, some people do abuse the use of a crate. I really, you know, anything. Anybody can be a jerk and abuse anything, really. Um, but the way that I see crate training and um, the way that I'm using a crate is like, she's a puppy, so if you think about a baby, like a baby person, you've got the pack and play and, you know, the crib, different things, where <clears throat> you would put the baby to keep them safe. So if you're cooking supper and you've, you know, you've fed the baby, you've changed the baby, um, you've, you know, held the baby, you've spent time with the baby, and now you need to make supper. You need that baby to be safe. So you put the baby in the pack and play so the baby isn't crawling around on the floor and eating everything or crawling up against the stove. You know, you 
or getting, you know, stepped on or... So that's how I view the crate. You know, she she's not afraid of it. She doesn't hate it. Does she fuss sometimes when she's in it because she wants to get out? Yeah. But I never let her out when she's fussing, so she never fusses for very long. And she settles right down. She's got her toys. She's got her, you know, chew sticks. And uh, she's, she's good. So that's how I'm using the crate. And she's not in there all day long. She has most of her naps in the crate. And a lot of the time during the day, I leave the door open. And then at night, she's got another, like a shipping crate next to my side of the bed. And she spends, you know, she spends the night in there. But she's, she's settling great. I'm training her in German. Whiskey, Platz. Yes, good, Platz. Good. Good. Sits. Sits. Good. And she can already sit, lie down, and we're working on stay just, you know, a little, little bit at a time. We're working on it. And she's doing great. She's smart. She's catching on. And like I said, she's very confident. We, uh, I took the kids to a Memorial Day parade and service. And, um... She was she was curious and interested, but she wasn't fearful. So all the big trucks going by and the horses going by, and she she just kind of sat and looked at them, but she wasn't reacting, you know, out of fear or anything. She just sat and watched. And uh, then at the conclusion of the service, there when they fired the guns, she looked up, but that was it. She wasn't like freaking out, and. Um, like a trash bag, an empty trash bag, shaking that out to put that in. She's kind of like, whoa, what is that? But then she'll come right over and check it out. And um, let's see, an empty gallon jug. I tossed that on the floor next to her just to see what she'd do. She just looked at it and then went right for it. <laughs> She's not fearful, which is, uh, like I said, that's quite different. She's got definitely a different personality. Um than the other two when they were puppies. Come here. Everybody wants to see you. They don't want to look at my mug. They want to see you. They want to see you. She only has one ear sticking up so far. <laughs> Yesterday, actually, the other one started to pop up a little bit. It'll get there. So, I mean, I'm pretty bummed that Junebug couldn't be here because the plan was, you know, for her to get to meet her little sister, and when I bought my canoe, I mean, I pretty much got the boat for my dog <laughs> to take her out on trips and stuff. That I mean, I was not going to get a boat that I could not take her in, you know. She's settling good, and uh, she's really sweet. She's a beautiful dog. Uh, Craig and Jen do a wonderful job raising puppies, and uh, so check them out. Like I said, as far as I know, they got one pop left one male pop and uh, they're really great dogs um, now I'll leave links to all the training books and the courses and stuff that I mentioned and yeah so I guess that's it for now I got a little uh, little bushcraft buddy in the making and we're just gonna take it one day at a time see how she does I mean she's you know she's part of the family she's not going anywhere so I figured I would just share that with you and um because she's going to be in the videos you know from now on and she has been so helpful planting the garden digging up because I, I put fish meal in with the peas and the beans and stuff and uh, she's coming up behind me and <laughs> digging it up but uh yeah she's cute she's really sweet and um i'm looking forward to you know training her how to shed hunt and just be a all around great dog. I hope I I hope I do good by her and uh, just by the German Shepherd breed in general. They're the the you know in the top three most intelligent dogs. They're just beautiful beautiful dogs. They're my favorite breed. Um, I just love watching them work. Um, like the, the canines you know you you can look them up on YouTube just different uh, 
different jobs that they do, you know, and and even in the show rings, you know, it's just amazing. It's amazing to watch them work, so. Alright, well thanks for tuning in and uh, meeting Whiskey, and we'll catch you on the next one. <coughs> Stop it. You have <coughs> Hey. <coughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs>